week of the day and we've had some incredible people up here share their information with you. We've seen people being recognized. We've got brand new people in the room just starting their journey with forever. And we've got people that have been here like me for 25 years. And um, people say to me, Jane, why do you still do forever? And I wanna just take you on a little journey to tell you why I still do forever and why I am hashtag forever proud. I joined forever with John on the 13th of August, 1993. And if anybody ever tells you that you can't recruit in August, then walk away from them because I was recruited in August. And for the brand new people in the room, just to sort of put that into context, people say that August is a holiday month, nobody wants to listen, nobody wants to look at forever, everybody's off doing other things. For me personally, it was a pivotal moment because I couldn't afford to go on holiday. But when someone showed me how I could afford to go on holiday, I joined in August. So a lot of what we do is down to the way that we think and we feel about who we are, what we do, and who we're approaching. Now, like so many people, when I first joined Forever, I had all of these emotions, all of these feelings that were flowing through my mind, my body, my conscious, my subconscious. And many of you in this room, especially the people that are here for the first time, may well be feeling the same way as I was. You're absolutely full of excitement and hope for the future, but there's a little voice inside of your mind saying, can I do it? Will it work? You're maybe concerned about what other people think of you, other people's opinions. It could be that you think, well, I really want to build a business, but I don't know anything about the product or the industry. It could be that you're fearful of rejection, mindful about people's perceptions. But in there, in all of those feelings and thoughts, you're also inspired. You're also hopeful. You're also motivated. And when I registered on that form all those years ago, I had all of these feelings. It is normal. It's okay to feel those thoughts. Because for most of us, we've never done anything like this in our lives before. It's a new idea, a new concept, a new journey, the next chapter. But isn't that what makes life rich and exciting? So no matter how we're feeling as we are starting our journey with forever, I hope that you are excited, putting aside all of the can I, will I, what if moments. But the other thing that I think is really important is to have a mantra, something that you will focus on every single day. And my mantra was, I will be successful. I will be successful. And then I changed it to, I am successful. I am successful. Because I think that we need to have an element of positivity in what we're doing and we need to build our belief as we start out on this incredible journey. And I want to just make a point here if I can. I'm not just talking to the brand new people in the room. I'm also talking to the people in the room that could have been in forever for maybe two, three, four, five, six years and have maybe plateaued. Or maybe, through whatever reason, are not taking the actions that you need to take in order to move yourself forward. It's about re-engaging. And it's about saying, what am I excited about? Why am I excited about it? And then having the mantra, I will be successful. Each and every one of you can step into your own brilliance. It's just a choice. Either you will or you won't. And I decided that I would. I've now got over one million people in my team around the world. And That spans over 40 countries. That didn't happen by accident. It happened because within the first 12 months of building my business, I made a conscious decision with John 
that we would not confine ourselves just to this island of ours, that we would take advantage of the global opportunity every single moment that we could and reach out into other countries. And it was simple, really. It was just deciding that we would embrace the global opportunity and the multiple income stream potential. But I guess because of my choices and because of the decisions I made, I'm very proud of the lives that we've changed around the world. And I could tell you endless stories of people who said yes to forever. And as a result of working with us and following a simple process and a simple system, their lives have changed beyond recognition. Now, I want to quantify that. I've got people in my team making six and seven figure incomes. Brilliant. But I've got people in my team in very poor countries where $500 a month is the equivalent to 5,000 pounds a month. We have to be mindful of our actions. We have to overcome our fears. We have to overcome the demons in our heads that tell us we can't. Who are we to be successful? Because with this opportunity, we have a responsibility. And that is to think way beyond ourselves and to think about the impacts that we can have, not just here, but around the world. And when I meet people on my travels and they come up to me and they say, thank you, and I've never met them before, and I say, tell me your story. And they tell me that they came to a training I was doing, and as a result of that training, they went back to their country, they implemented what I taught them, and now, they can feed their families. They've paid off their debt. They don't have to worry about the money anymore. And I think it's really, really important to understand the power of this opportunity. This opportunity is so big, so important, so valuable, that we must not underestimate the power of life that we can change as a result of our decisions. And that's what still keeps me motivated. And that's what still keeps me on a daily basis following a simple system. You heard Sam just say it, and well done Sam for soaring manager. You've worked so hard for that position and really proud of all you are and all you've done to change other people's lives. But you know, I follow a simple system. I don't do anything differently to you. I had such a funny phone call recently. Somebody called me up and said, oh, there's a post on Facebook about you and they'd screenshot it and sent it to me. And somebody had seen me working in a hotel. I was in a reception area, sitting doing a planning meeting with a manager. And someone had seen me, taken a picture of it, put it on Facebook and said, Jane Leach working with someone. And I thought, <laughs> how bizarre. What do people think that I do? Because you know, I just do simple things on a daily basis. I do exactly what you do on a daily basis. I use the first steps to manager. I've used it for years and years and years and years and years. I never ever miss a success express event like this unless I'm a guest speaker in another country or it's a wedding in the family or something like that. I never miss them. 25 years of coming to these events. Why? Because this is part of the business building process. I go to all the trainings that I need to go to. I participate in them. I run them. I help others become part of them. And I also embrace leadership, stepping into the role of being a good leader. That's all I've done, really, for 25 years. I layer that with three basic principles. I use the product lots of them. I promote and retail the product, lots of them. And I share the opportunity every single day. So I think when you listen to what I'm saying is, you will discover that we're more alike than different. We're just more alike than different. I do exactly what you do. I've just been doing it for a bit longer. I may be a bit more tenacious. I may be a bit more focused. I ain't no quitter. 
So I would never, ever give up. Never. I would never quit. I would never, ever let somebody else steal my dream. I'm consistent in all that I do. And maybe those are the qualities that have allowed me to take this very simple system and develop it around the world. So ask yourself, are you doing what I do? And if you are, then I can promise you the next five, 10, 15, 20 years are going to be the most magical years of your life. Now, I wanna share something with you, and this is really, really important right now. Because a lot of people say, oh, it's tough right now in the marketplace. Everything's tough, it's harder, it's this, it's that, it's the other. You know, people are looking for the excuse. They're looking to justify maybe why they're not doing what they should be doing. And I want to share with you right now that I am super, super, super excited about the business. 25 years on, I'm as excited today as I was when I first joined. And people, you know, people say to me, but why? You've done it all, you've got it all. And I wanna say it's not about the money. I'm not gonna send it back. <laughs> and it was about the money in the early days. I needed to earn two and a half thousand a month to breathe. But as a result of doing the right things and building a business in the right way, of course it expands and grows. And I don't mean this to sound flippant because it isn't in any way whatsoever. Because I know there are people in the audience today that are hurting a little bit financially. Maybe, you know, pennies are tight. So it's not flippant because I've been there. But it's not the money that drives me anymore. And it hasn't been for a long time. It's people. And knowing through my own successes, my own failures, my own experiences, that I can genuinely make a difference in the lives of other people. And I think you have to have that kind of mindset in order to be successful. And I also think that you need to understand why now, more so than ever in the last five years, is prime business building time. And if you don't see what I see, then I would say, pay attention. Pay attention now, because I'm gonna share some stats with you. The health and wellness industry was predicted to be a trillion dollar industry by 2020. The health and wellness industry has already surpassed a trillion dollars. And we're not even at the end of 2018. So you are in a market sector that, ha that is not set to boom, it is booming and growing. And you need to understand the size of that marketplace, locally and globally. Now I want to say something to you also about the direct selling industry. So you understand what you've got your hands on, you understand the importance of the sector that you're involved in. The products that are, as Holly said, 15 new launches of products this year alone in forever. And I'm privileged to know what they're working on for the next two, three, four years. They're amazing. They're incredible. I mean, the face mask alone, I believe you can build a business with just that one product. I'm already beginning to think in my mind how we can build a, a marketing model around that one product to help people achieve supervisor or manager how to market it, how to recruit with it, because I see it being such a fundamental product in our age. It's new, it's unique, it's cutting edge. That excites me, even after 25 years. But I wanna talk about the direct selling industry, because the direct selling industry is massive and also a booming sector worldwide. And another reason why you need to understand that now is the time to capitalize on potential momentum. Right now. Right now is the time. Let me share some stats with you. The USA, the USA came out top within the direct selling industry. 19% 
of all sales in the USA come through direct selling. China, 17%, Japan, 9%, Korea, 9%, Brazil, 7%. Germany, 5%, Mexico, 4%, Malaysia, 3%, and the UK, 2%. So think about the UK at 2%, think about the USA at 19%, look at the potential. And if you want to compare us to somebody a bit more comparable, look at Germany. Germany's 4%, we're 2%, we're roughly the same size in population. Just there is market potential. Now that excites me. You see, I don't want to be involved in an industry that isn't growing, that hasn't got potential. I want to be in an industry that is growing and set to boom even more than it is right now. Then we need to look at the turnover of our industry worldwide. 182 billion billion, I don't even know how to write that. I guess it's a lot of noughts, isn't it? Turnover globally in our industry last year. If you take an average of 40%, that's what's paid out in commissions and bonuses within our industry last year. That means 72 billion was paid back to people in our sector last year. Do you know how much that is a day? 200 million. Are you beginning to get an idea of the size, the scope and the scale of what you're involved in? You see, I find this mind blowing. 200 million paid out daily in our sector on a global basis. And people say to me, it doesn't work. What other sector do you know that is paying out over 72 billion a year to entrepreneurs? Where else can that happen? Where else and what other sector allows you to set no limits on your potential? You know, I worked hard for 18 years in my career. I worked hard to be broke. I worked hard to become a millionaire in forever. It took me 18 years to be broke in a career. It took me three years to make my first six-figure income in this in forever. And there is nothing different from me to you. Every one of you could leave this room today and make a personal commitment to yourself that you will work your socks off for the next three years. You'll put the blinkers on, you'll shut out the noise, you'll not look left, you'll not look right, you will embrace the concept, brace the system, and off you go. Every one of you, whether you've been in five minutes, five years, or 10 years, every one of you, because it's all in here. It's all in here. We could not be in a better period in the UK than right now. However, it doesn't seem like that, does it? When we look at all the doom and gloom that's going on, the uncertainty, I mean, if you think about it right now, we've got politicians fighting. We've got politicians bitching and moaning at each other. We've got a divide with Brexit. Are we in or are we out? We all have our own views on that, but that's creating uncertainty. We have natural disasters. We've got pre-planned disasters. We've had terrorisms. We've had so much stuff going on in the UK outside of what we do in, in our business that can distract us. But take a step back and say, does it distract us or should it be empowering us? And I actually think right now it is prime time, prime time to capitalize on an uncertain country. Let me tell you why. If you look at companies now out there in the marketplace, 
It's scary what's going on in the real world. You know, our high street is changing beyond recognition. Just in the town that I live in, we, you know, we've been a lucky town. We've got a lovely little market town in Monmouth, and we've not had any real problems with recession, depression, and challenges. But just in the last few months, we've seen three major shops in the high street close. And do you know why they've closed? Not because of their product, not because of them, but because of greed. Greed from landlords who won't work with them to support the cost of rent. Greed with councils who won't work with them to help them with the rates. These people, their livelihoods are coming to an end because of greed. Then look at the bigger high streets and look in the last three years at the companies that have closed their doors or have had massive financial challenges. We've got Mothercare, British Home Stores, Toys R Us, Staples, Banana Republic, Phones For You, House of Fraser. I was brought up with that company, with that shop. House of Fraser alone are making 17,500 people redundant over the next two years. That's people's families, people's children, people's homes, people's holidays, people's peace of mind compromised because of this changing world and uncertainty that we live in. And then what do we hear over the last couple of days? We hear that Debenhams is closing 50 stores with over 5,000 people who will be affected, displaced, with nowhere to go because the places they may have gone have already gone or are going. Asda. I've never been into Asda, but I hear they're laying off 3,000 people. Well, it's only because we don't have an Asda near us. <laughs> we, um, we have a Waitrose in Monmouth, darling. It's very nice. Oh dear, and if you get over the bridge, there's a little, but I don't go over the bridge very often. <laughs> but you know, John Lewis had a little bit of a wobble there, didn't they, when they said they've uh, made a loss. You know, all of these things that we've been brought up with, these institutions, they are wobbling. Think about the restaurant change, Prezzo. 94 of their restaurants closed. James is Italian, closed 12 of his restaurants. Coluccio's have closed 30 of their branches. Homebase, Poundworld, Carpet Right, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. And you're probably thinking, oh my God, Jane, I'm about to slip my wrists. <laughs> no, this is a perfect time for you to be talking, recruiting, focusing. Who are you going to help? Who are you going to save? Who are you going to bring into our community? and give them hope? Or are you gonna sit there and go, oh, it's really tough out there in the marketplace, oh, so hard. Let me tell you something. This last six to eight months, I've never found it easier to talk to people. I've never found it more comfortable to speak to people knowing that I'm bringing people home, bringing people into safety, bringing people into a place where they can breathe, where they can feel part of something, where they can feel safe and secure. The amount of people I'm speaking to at the moment who are terrified about their pensions. You know, the pension crisis, used to be able to retire as a woman at the age of 65, is now 69. And by 2020, they say that the state pension, as you know, it will be no longer recognizable. And yet in forever, we have the ability to build a residual income that will outlive us, a legacy income. Where's Jan, where's Jan Whitaker? When Jan Whitaker, stand up Jan. I remember working with Jan in the early days. And Jan said yes. She had no idea in that moment that she would change the journey, the direction of her daughter's lives. She had no idea. But she's not only made a difference in their lives, but her grandchildren 
and ultimately their children. Because we don't have to worry about pensions. If you build a business with forever, you are secure. The money comes in every single month. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you won't be tax efficient by having a pension, but you don't need one. Because forever will never take that income away from you, unless you do something unethical, of course. But it's yours, and it's your children's, and it's your children's children. Do you know what I read the other day that really upset me? One in eight people in the UK will retire in the next 10 to 15 years with no pension other than what the state will give them. And some of you in the room are young, like in your early 20s, and you think, oh, that will never be me, but it will be you one day. But it won't be you if you build a business with forever. It's a fact. It's a fact. The thing that is driving our business right now, in forever, is we have 40 years of stability. We have an impeccable track record in over 150 countries around the world. We have a man whose vision, whose vision, and he said it several times in his video this morning, was to help one another. Think about that. For those of you in a job, your colleagues aren't going to want to help you get promotion, are they? Because you're a threat to them. You're a threat to them. Because if you get promoted, it means they won't. But in forever, did you see the joy it gives people to recognize other people being promoted? A statistic that I heard the other day that made me again realize the power of our industry. There's been a, a report done on loneliness. Loneliness. One of the biggest causes of depression in the UK at the moment. And loneliness is not just the elderly who sit in their homes on their own for day after day. It's the youngsters who sit behind their phones and their computers day after day after day without interacting with people. No one seems to look out for each other anymore, but in forever we create a community. A community where everybody is valued. Whether you are a great user of the product, whether you are someone who retails two or three or four cases a month, whether you are someone that is a brilliant supervisor, whether you are someone that is a phenomenal manager, or someone that goes on to embrace the whole marketing model, there is room for everybody. And I think it's important to understand why I believe in the next five years that we are set to boom. And that is because of the very nature of who we are and what we do. We can change some of the challenges in the marketplace. We can change the fact that a lot of people in jobs don't feel secure anymore. Because in forever, you are secure. We can change the fact that people don't feel they belong to anything anymore because in forever we are a community. But you guys need to be creating community as well. That means open your home. When I first started building my business, as many of the other leaders in this room, I built my business to 3,000 pounds a month around my kitchen table. I wore out two sets of chairs in the way, on, the, on that journey. But we came together, heart to heart, eyeball to eyeball, shoulder to shoulder. We bonded, we formed relationships, we became one. This is the power of the way that we move forward. Now, the internet has allowed us to um, reach out to people now around the world like we never could in the early days. When I opened Italy, which is one of my biggest producing countries, Literally every eight weeks, I would jump on a plane, go out there for four days and work, literally 24-7 for four days. Now I can do a webinar. But I don't just do a webinar, because I'm more effective when I'm in front of people. So look at some of the things that are causing concern in the marketplace and know 
that forever is the solution. Forever is the solution. You can start in the nooks and crannies. You can build it around your existing commitments. And in doing so, you can begin to change your life. As that belief begins to build, you can start sharing the business with other people, knowing that you can help them do what you've done. And one step at a time, one day at a time, one one-to-one -one at a time, one business presentation at a time, one success day at a time, we begin to change lives. And that is the key to success in our industry. And I truly believe that those people that will adapt to this new world that we live in are going to be the next generation of superstars in this industry. And I like to think of it as, mi as merging some of the new methodologies with the traditional methodologies. And what that means is, don't be one-dimensional. In other words, learn every aspect of the business, even the bits that you say, I don't want to learn. I remember in the early days being terrified of speaking to people I didn't know, because my mind was full of what if, what if, what if. Interestingly, whatever I thought about was not the reality. What I'm getting now by talking to people that I don't know, because I talk to anybody, I will literally talk to anybody. I don't mind whether they laugh at me. I don't mind what they think of me. Because the bottom line is, I don't have the problem, they do. But I am the solution to their problem if they will listen. But what I have noticed is if you take some of the old world and bring it into this new world, this will be the next generation of future leaders. In other words, don't just sit behind your computer, don't just sit behind your screens. You heard Sam say that she built her business around her kids in her home, doing home meetings, home trainings, all sorts of things like that, as well as taking advantage of every aspect of working online. We need to create those communities. We need to understand what Rex's vision was, and that was of helping other people. A smile, a bit of praise, a hug, an encouraging word. You believing in others why they don't believe in themselves is enough to start the ball rolling. So that is why I am so passionate about forever and why, as far as I'm concerned, if you cut me through the middle, I just, I'm like aloe, I'm just green through the middle because I am forever. This is my purpose, this is my focus, this is my passion, this is who I am, this is what I do. And I guess maybe that energy, that charisma shines out because I have given myself to this company, this product range, and to the cause of helping other people. And I think what happens is when you truly give yourself to the opportunity, you have an energy, you have a different energy, and that energy is attractive to other people. You know, I've always got a smile on my face, I've always got a bounce in my step, I'm always happy. And I'm not very often, I'm not a miserable, negative, whinging person. I always will be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And I think that shines through. And I think when you're prospecting, it becomes an attractive asset. So don't be apologetic. Don't hold back. Don't let your fears hold you back. Stand tall. Stand proud. You made the best decision in your life to get involved with forever. It will never fail you, but you need to have the attitude that you will never fail it. It's gonna stretch you. It's gonna take you on a journey that will be a huge roller coaster ride. You'll have your highest highs, you have your lowest lows. But ultimately, when you come out the other end, you're a better person. You are a better person for all that you have learnt and all that you do to help other people. So as I finish on this session right now, now is the time of the year that each and every one of you needs to reflect. And I've just started doing this myself because it's at this time of the year that I start thinking about my goals for next year. And then what I'm doing is I'm breaking the goals down into quarterly chunks, then into monthly chunks, then I'm looking at the weekly and the daily activity that I need to do in order to achieve the goal at the end of next year. And I need to look at that now. And the best advice I can give you is, is that you need to have an element of honesty when you reflect on yourself. Because all of you are in forever. 
But are you really in forever? Have you given yourself to it yet, whereby you will do whatever it takes to be successful, like Natalie said? Have you given yourself yet? And sometimes, and I've had to have a little chat with myself on occasion. See, I apply honesty even in my own planning. I say, Jane, you're simply not stepping up to the mark enough there. You're not talking to enough people. You're not engaging with enough people. Your pipeline hasn't got enough. You talk, you talk the talk, but you're not walking the walk. So I'm honest with myself. You see, it's very easy to point the finger of blame, but when you point the finger of blame, three fingers are pointing straight back at you. So have an element of honesty. And now is the time to review this year. For those of you that are brand new, you've got a blank canvas. Oh my goodness, happy days, exciting times. Paint on that canvas with bold brush strokes. Be the architect of your future. Don't leave it in the hands of somebody else to determine your quality of life. For those of you that are reflecting on the past year, ask yourself honestly, have you done enough? Have you recruited enough? Have you spoken to enough people? Because if you've only recruited one or two people in the whole year, honestly, you haven't done enough. There's no point moaning about what hasn't happened because actually you haven't done enough. And remember, I've had to have a little talk with myself on occasion. And as I say, for those of you that have got a blank canvas, don't hold back. Don't impose limitations on yourself. You can do anything you want if you'll just put your mind to it. I think we all owe a great deal of gratitude and respect to the man who started this 40 years ago. Where would we all be if he'd quit when the going got tough? When I think about the aloe fields going through the big freeze, he could have thrown the towel in, couldn't he, and said, no, it's too much like hard work, but he didn't. He went out and he bought up every acre he could of land so he could replant aloe. Why did he do that for us? Because his vision is to help people. So I'm really, really excited as we come to the end of this year. Time to reflect, time to plan, time to stop making excuses, time to take advantage of the marketplace and to bring people into forever and give them a safe legacy style income. Time to work a little bit harder. Time to be grateful for all that we have and all that we're going to have. Because I believe 2019 is gonna be a game changer. We've got amazing products, we've got the new aloe, we've got the distribution in place, we've got all the marketing tools in place. All we need now is everybody to step it up and step into their own brilliance. So I, for one, have set some big goals for next year. How many in this room have done the same already? A few of you. For those that you haven't yet, maybe tomorrow you could turn off your phone, turn off the, maybe the radio, turn off anything, and just have an hour where you give complete clarity to your future. Because your future is in your hands. You're in safe hands with forever, You've got a great team around you who want you to be successful, and it's your time. So let's finish the year strong. Let's all of us be grateful for what we have. Let's all of us help each other a bit more, create some more community, and let's all of us make 2019 our very, very, very best year yet. Let's make a difference like we've never made before, because together, everybody achieves more. Thank you very much. Thank you.